Hello. I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's word to you today. Now, since yesterday, I just felt strong in my spirit that the Lord wants to bless you. It, it's just heavy on me. And even as we set out to do this broadcast, I feel it so strong in my heart. I feel it so strong in my heart. Can we call for that daily bread? Let's begin from there. Praise God. Join me to say, Father, today is a new day and I make my demand for my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I read a scripture to you yesterday from Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. And Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor. All you who labor. Not some of you who labor. All. There is space for everybody. What do you call labor in your life? He says, come, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I don't know how heavy your own load is. I don't know how heavy it is. But you're exactly the one Jesus is calling. He says, come. He is the blesser. He is the blesser. If you put yourself as one who needs to be blessed, trust me, the blesser will bless you. That's why I've been sharing with you all months, the one who God will bless. Put yourself in that situation. How do I put myself in that situation? He's giving you an invitation. He says, come. Come. So someone say, where will I see Jesus to go to? He's not far from you. He's right there where you are. It is the acknowledging of him that brings you to him. You don't have to go anywhere to meet him. You don't have to go to any mountain to meet him. You don't have to go to any particular church to meet him. Right there where you are. It is the acknowledging of his presence that opens the door for that rest that he's talking about. He said, when you come, he will give you rest. When you come, he would give you rest. That's why Jesus had to go away from walking physically on this earth. Why? Maybe today, all of us would say, unless you go to Jerusalem or go to Israel to meet him, you will not get that rest. But he said to his disciples, it is better for you that I go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. But he made an assurance. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. Meaning everything I have promised you, I will do it. How will he do it? He told us, the Holy Ghost, when he comes, he will guide you into all truths. Brothers and sisters, Jesus left us with the Holy Ghost. The beauty of that Holy Ghost is this. That what when I read of what Jesus said here, for example, come to me. I'm not thinking of the Jesus in Jerusalem. I'm thinking of the Jesus who's right here with me. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is right here with me. He is the one here. And it's the Holy Spirit that will answer to this call. Come to me. I'm coming to him right now. He's there with you. He said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. It's a sure promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's a sure promise. He is there. He never left. Those times you thought he left, it was your mind. He never left. Sometimes trouble, when trouble comes, you begin to look for, what sin did I commit that is bringing this trouble? Take a cue from Jesus. He met this man who was born blind. So when they saw the man, they asked Jesus, who sinned 
that this man was born blind. Because how do you explain it? If sin is the problem and this man was born blind, then most likely it was the sin of the parents or the sin of some, I mean, think about it. You can't blame the sin on the boy when he was born. So they asked Jesus, but Jesus didn't answer that anyone sinned. Jesus clearly told them, nobody sinned. So this blindness is not because of anybody's sin. But rather, Jesus said that the work of God may be made manifest in their life. That's why I'm here. Brothers and sisters, it's not time to blame your situation on any sin that you committed or someone else committed. But here's the truth. Jesus is calling you today. He's calling you today. That is why he came. He came to take out that body. He didn't tell us the kind of bodies he wants to take out. He didn't say, oh, it's the bodies of only those who have not sinned. It's the bodies of only those who go to church. It's the body. He said, no, everyone, everyone. So maybe except you're the one who's proud enough to say, hey, what I'd have is not a body. It's just uh, one of those things. Okay, maybe excluded from the ones Jesus is calling. Not because Jesus is saying don't come, but because your pride will not allow you to come to him. So you exclude yourself actually. But everyone that feels I'm carrying this burden, it is too heavy for me. Maybe it's the burden of sin and guilt that has been in your heart. Jesus is still telling you, come. You've been trying to remedy your sins. Some of you have lived bad lives in the past and you just feel your whole life right now is to see how you can remedy. So you serve God thinking that God will use your service today to wipe away your past. Brothers and sisters, that is not how God thinks. That is not how God behaves. You see, before you became bad, he had a purpose for your life. Before you did any wrong thing on earth, God had a purpose for your life. So when he says, come to me, the rest he's talking about is the rest to enter into your purpose that he has for you and begin to leave it. The rest is not to lie down on the chair and cross your legs and begin to sleep. The rest is to live a satisfying life, to live a life that is not full of struggles, to live a life that before the next thing comes, you already know what to do. That's why Jesus said of the Holy Ghost, he will show you things to come. So all these are things that Jesus is giving. The ability to see what is coming ahead. Meaning nothing should take you by surprise in this life. That's why you have the Holy Spirit. Nothing is supposed to take you by surprise. Nothing. Your business shouldn't suddenly flop. No. No. Your child shouldn't suddenly turn bad. No. The Holy Spirit is there. He will show you things to come. That's why you must acknowledge him. Acknowledge his presence in your life. Acknowledge his works in your life. No. Philemon tells us that the communication of our faith might be effective by we acknowledging every good thing that is in us. I don't know what is better than having the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Nothing is better than that. You know the reason? Because Jesus, when he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, he was actually referring to the Holy Spirit. And I'm, why is it with you? I've said this many times. Because he wants to always tell you what to do. So if you will cast that burden on him, come to him. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you in my life. I acknowledge your presence with me. You know what, Lord? I've been carrying this burden by myself for whatever reason. And these have been my thoughts. But today, I bring that burden to you. I come to you. I need the rest that you give to me. And the Lord Jesus is going to open up his gates for you. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I pray for homes right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray for marriages right now. 
every labor, every weight you have been carrying in your marriage. That's why it's not time for you to give up. Don't give up yet. But even right now, I see the hand of the Lord coming upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, wife, stop crying. That crying, sleepless night is your labor. But Jesus is giving you rest right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive his rest right now. I say a particular family, there's so much financial body. Now, not the normal burden everybody goes through but there is some tough financial burden in your life right now at the that in fact right now as a wife you're the one watching me right now you are you are thinking of how to just move on by yourself because you can't see any ray of hope in this situation you love your husband but you've gotten to that point because this thing has been for a while you've gotten to that point where you just feel this is heading nowhere listen to me it's not your husband's fault i know sometimes men can be irresponsible in different cases but right now because you are a child of god when god promise you rest he means rest therefore in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for you right now that you will find that rest that Jesus spoke about. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Lord is doing everything to bring you rest. It is not your own decision. It is him that promised you rest. Therefore, receive the rest from the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, receive it now. Whatever will cause you to have rest, whatever from the Lord, will cause you to have rest. Receive it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I see someone having a um, problem with your right ear. With your right ear. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I, I speak rest. I speak rest. I speak rest in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be healed. And that healing will bring you rest right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command whatever is causing that to go from you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit rest at your workplace rest in your job because the lord is showing me someone you having terrible issues at work terrible issues at work you are even scared that you're going to be fired very soon thank you holy spirit he's calling you he says come come because he wants to give you rest. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, receive that rest right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive that rest right now. He is turning things around for you, for your good. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for your children. Wherever they are on the face of the earth, the Lord is giving you rest where your children are concerned. I declare the name of the Lord Jesus as he has promised. Great shall be the peace of our children. Hey, you are a covenant child of God and you belong to that promise. He said, great shall be the peace of your children for they shall be taught of the Lord. Hey, don't no regrets. Don't start thinking, I wish I knew I would have taught them the way of the Lord. No, he said... He said, he said, they shall be taught of the Lord. Meaning wherever they are right now, the Holy Ghost will become their teacher. Wherever they are right now, the Holy Ghost is becoming their teacher. They shall be taught of the Lord. And because the Lord is their teacher, they will receive his words and their lives will turn out right. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as for you, he is giving you rest where your children are concerned. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, I declare over your life, none of your children will bring you sorrow. None of your children will bring you sorrow. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive rest right now. Everything that is causing fear in your heart. Everything that is causing fear in your heart. I, I see a lady, you're quite advanced in age. Listen, listen. 
take that fear off your mind. That fear is of the devil. It is not really concerned. The devil is putting pressure on your mind. And that's how he wants to cut short your age. Listen to me. There is no reason to be afraid at all. Why? Jesus has promised you rest. I declare right now, receive that rest. Madam, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. You, you sometimes feel that palpitation in your heart. You, you can't really tell where it's coming from. But it, it, it just comes. It just comes. Shortness of breath. It just comes. And I hear the Lord say you worry too much. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive that rest right now. Receive that rest right now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is well with you. Hear me. The Lord is giving you joy. He's restoring joy in your heart. In Jesus' mighty name. Our time is up for today. I, I wish we can go on, praise God. But it doesn't mean the Spirit of God has stopped giving rest. If you hear the sound of my voice, just say, Lord, I receive your rest in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and it will come. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.